Good evening, one and all. We welcome you all to the international webinar series on holistic health, well-being, and sustainable development 2022-2023, commemorating Azadi Kamrit Mahotsu, nation celebrating 76 years of independence, United Nations Sustainable Development Goals 2015 to 2030, as part of awareness and campaigns. India's G20 Presidency and World Health Organization 75th Anniversary Year in collaboration with Sri Holistic Health Foundation India and Sri Research Institute, Center for Art, Sciences and Wellbeing. Before we start our sessions, let's take the blessings of Almighty. With the blessings of Almighty, we shall continue with today's commemorations. Today, in India, we are commemorating Teacher's Day. On the occasion of birth anniversary of Sri Sarvepalli Radhe Krishna. He was born on 5th September 1888 and left to Edo on 17th April 1975. He was, he was natively known as Radha Krishnaya who was a great Indian politician, philosopher, and a statesman who served as the second president of India from 1962 to 1967. He also previously served as the first vice president of India from 1952 to 1962. He was the second ambassador of India to the Soviet Union from 1949 to 1952. He was also the fourth vice chancellor of the Banaras Hindu University from 1939 to 1948, and the second vice chancellor of Andhra University from 1931 to 1936. Radha Krishnan is considered one of the most influential and distinguished 20th century scholars of comparative religion and philosophy. He held the King George V chair of Mental and Moral Science at the University of Calcutta from 1921 to 1932 and Spalding Chair of Eastern Religion and Ethics at University of Oxford from 1936 to 1952. Radha Krishnan philosophy was grounded in Advaita Vedanta, reinterpreting this tradition for a contemporary understanding. He defended Hinduism against what he called uninformed Western criticism, contributing to the formation of the contemporary Hindu identity. He has been influential in shaping the understanding of Hinduism in both India and the West and earned a reputation as a bridge builder between India and the West. Radha Krishnan was awarded several high awards during his life, including a knighthood in 1931, the Bharat Ratna, the highest civilian award in India in 1954, and honorary membership of the British Royal Order of Merit in 1963. He was also one of the founders of Helpage India, a non-profit organization for elderly underprivileged in India. Radha Krishnan believed that teachers should be the best minds in the country. 
since 1962, his birthday has been celebrated in India as Teacher's Day on 5th September every year. Radha Krishnan was born as Sarvepalli Radha Krishnaya into a Telugu speaking family of Sarvepalli Veera Swami and Sitamma. He was the second born of the three siblings in Tiruttani of North Arcot district in the erstwhile Madras presidency, now in Tiruvallur district of Tamil Nadu. His family hails from Sarvepalli village in Nellur district of Andhra Pradesh. His early years were spent in Tiruttani and Tirupati. His father was a subordinate revenue official in the service of a local zamindar, local landlord, and his primary education was at KV High School at Tiruttani. In 1896, he moved to the Hermansburg Evangelical Lutheran Mission School in Tirupati and Government High School, Government High Secondary School at Walaj Pete. Radha Krishnan was awarded scholarships throughout his academic life. He joined Uri's College in Vellur for his high school education. After his FA, that is first of arts class, he joined Madras Christian College, affiliated to the University of Madras at the age of 60. He graduated from there in 1907 and also finished his master's from the same college. Radha Krishnan, studied philosophy by chance rather than by choice. Being a financially constrained student, when a cousin who graduated from the same college passed on his philosophy textbooks to Radha Krishnan, it automatically decided his academic course. Sarvepalli wrote his bachelor's degree thesis on the ethics of the Vedanta and its metaphysical presuppositions. It was intended to be a reply to the charge that the Vedanta system had no room for ethics. Two of his professors, Revered William Meston and Dr. Alfred George Hogg, commended Radha Krishnan's dissertation. Radha Krishnan's thesis was published when he was only 20. According to the Radha Krishnan himself, the criticism of Hogg and other Christian teachers of Indian culture disturbed my faith and shook the traditional props of which I learned. Radha Krishnan himself describes how, as a student, the challenge of the Christian critics impelled me to make a study of Hinduism and find out what is living and what is dead in it. My pride as a Hindu, roused by the enterprise and eloquence of Swami Vivekananda, was deeply hurt by the treatment according to Hinduism in missionary institutions, as quoted by Radha Krishna. This led him to a critical study of Indian philosophy and religion and a lifelong defense of Hinduism against uninformed Western criticism. At the same time, Radha Krishna commended Professor Hogg as my distinguished teacher and as one of the greatest Christian thinkers we had in India. Besides, Professor William Skinner, who was acting principal of the college, gave a testimony saying, he is one of the best men we have had in the recent years, which enabled him to get the first job in Presidency College in reciprocation. Radha Krishna decided one of his early books and dedicated to William Skinner, Radha Krishnan expressed his anguish against the British critics in the ethics of Vedanta. Here he wrote, it, ha it has become philosophic fashion of the present day to consider the Vedanta system a non-ethical one. He quotes a German-born philologist. A German-born philologist and orientalist who lived and studied in Britain for most of the life, Max Muller, as stating, the Vedanta philosophy has not neglected the important spheres of ethics, but 
on contrary we find ethics in the beginning ethics in the middle and ethics in the end to say nothing of the contrary of the fact of the mind so engrossed with the divine things as vedanta philosophers or night not likely to fall victims of the ordinary temptations of the world the flesh and other powers so radha krishna then explained how his philosophy requires us people to look upon all creation as one as non different this is where he introduces the spirit of abeda he quotes in morals the individual is enjoined to cultivate a spirit of abeda or non difference thus he mentions how this naturally leads to the ethics of love and brotherhood including sister every every other individual is to be regarded as your co-equal and treated as an end and not a means the vedanta requires us to respect human dignity and demands the recognition of a man as a man woman as woman radha krishnan was married to shivakamu in may 1903 a distant cousin at the age of 16 when she, when she was at the age of 10 as per the tradition the hindu marriage was arranged by the family the couple had five daughters named padmavati rukmini sushila sundari and shakuntala they also had a son named sarvepalli gopai gopal who went on to a notable career as a historian many of radha krishnan family members including his grandchildren and great grandchildren have pursued a wide range of careers in academia public policy medicine law banking business publishing and other fields across the world former indian cricketer vs vvs lakshman is his great grand nephew shivakamu died on 26th december 1956 they were married for about 53 years in april 1909 radha krishnan was appointed to the department of philosophy at the madras presidency college thereafter in 1918 he was elected selected as professor of philosophy by the university of mysore where he taught his maharaja's college mysore by that time he had written many articles for journals of repute like the quest journal of philosophy and the international journal of ethics he completed his first book the philosophy of rabindranath tagore he believed tagore's philosophy to be genuine manifestation of the indian spirit his second book the reign of religion in contemporary philosophy was published in 1920 in 1921 he was appointed as a professor in philosophy to occupy the king george five chair of mental and moral sciences at the university of calcutta he represented the university of calcutta at the congress of the universities of the british empire in june 1926 and the international congress of philosophy at harvard university in september 1926 another important academic event during this period was the invitation to deliver the hibert lecture on the ideals of life which he delivered at manchester college oxford in 1929 and which was subsequently published in book form as an idealistic view of life in 1929 radha krishnan was invited to take the post vacated by principal j estin carpenter at manchester college this gave him opportunity to lecture to the students of university of oxford on comparative religion for his services to education he was knighted by george v in the june 1931 birthday honors and formally invested with the honor by the governor general of india the earl of wellington in april 1932 however he ceased to use the title after the indian independence preferring instead his academic title of doctor he was the vice chancellor of andhra university from 1931 to 1936 during his first convocation address 
he spoke about his native andhra as we the andhras are fortunately situated in some respects i firmly believe that if any part of india is capable of developing an effective sense of unity it is in andhra the hold of con- conservatism is not so strong our generosity of spirit and openness of mind are all well known our social instinct and suggestibility are still active our moral sense and sympathetic imagination are not much wrapped by dogma our women are relatively more free love of the mother tongue binds us all in 1936 radha krishnan was named spalding professor of eastern religion and ethics at the university of oxford and was elected a fellow of all souls college the same year again in 1937 He was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature, although this nomination process, as for all laureates, was not public at that time. Further nominations for the award would continue steadily into the 1960s. In 1939, Pandit Madan Mohan Mal Malviya invited him to succeed him as the Vice Chancellor of Benares Hindu University. he served as its vice chancellor till january 1948 radha krishnan started his political career rather late in life after his successful academic career his international authority preceded his political career he was one of those stalwarts who attended andhra mahasabha in 1928 where he seconded the idea of renaming ceded districts division of madras presidency as rayal seema in 1931 he was nominated the league of nations committee for intellectual cooperation where after in western eyes he was a, he was recognized hindu authority on indian ideas and a persuasive interpreter of the role of eastern institutions in contemporary society when india became independent in 1947 radha krishna represented india at unesco in 1946 to 52 and was later ambassador of india to the soviet union from 1949 to 1952 he was also elected the constituent assembly of india and radha krishnan was elected as the first vice president of india in 1952 and elected as president of india during the term 1962-1967 radha krishnan did not have a background in the congress party nor he was active in indian independence movement he was a politician in shadow his motivation lay in the pride of hindu culture and the defense of hinduism against uninformed western criticism according to the historical historian donald mackenzie brown he had always defended hindu culture against uninformed western criticism and has symbolized the pride of indians in their own intellectual traditions when radha krishnan became the president of india some of his students and friends requested him to allow them to celebrate his birthday on 5th september he replied instead of celebrating my birthday it would be my proud privilege if september 5th is observed as teachers day and since then his birthday has been celebrated as teachers day in india radha krishnan tried to bridge eastern and western thought defending hinduism against uninformed western criticism but also incorporating western philosophical and religious thoughts radha krishnan was one of the most prominent spokesmen of neo vedanta his metaphysics was grounded in advaita vedanta but he reinterpreted advaita vedanta for a contemporary understanding 
He acknowledged the reality and diversity of the world of experience, which he saw as grounded in and supported by the absolute of Brahman. Radha Krishnan also reinterpreted Shankara's notion of Maya. According to the Radha Krishnan, Maya is not a strict absolute idealism, but a subjective misperception of the world as ultimately real. Intuition, synonymously called as religious experience, has a central place in Radha Krishnan's philosophy as a source of knowledge which is not mediated by conscious thought. His specific interest in experience can be traced back to the works of William James, F. H. Bradley, Henry Bregson, Frederick von Hoob, and to Vivekananda, and who had a strong influence on Sarvepalli's thought. According to Radha Krishnan's inst institution of a self-certifying character, that is Swata Siddha, self-evidencing, that is Swasam Vedya and self-luminance, Swasha Prakasha, in his book, An Idealistic View of Life, he made a powerful case for the importance of intuitive thinking as opposed to purely intellectual forms of thought. According to Radha Krishnan, Institution plays a specific role in all kinds of experience. Radha Krishna discerns eight sorts of experience. Cognitive experience, sense experience, discursive reasoning, intuitive apprehension, psychic experience, aesthetic experience, ethical experience, and religious experience. For Radha Krishna, theology and creeds are intellectual formulations and symbols of religion's experience or religious institutions. Radha Krishnan qualified the variety of religions hierarchically according to their apprehension of religious experience, giving Advaita Vedanta the highest place. The worshippers of the Absolute, the worshippers of the personal God, the worshippers of the incarnations like Rama, Krishna, Buddha, those who worship ancestors, deities, and sages, the worshippers of the pretty forces and spirits. Radha Krishna saw Hinduism as a scientific religion based on facts apprehended via institution or religious experience. According to Radha Krishna, if philosophy of a religion is to become scientific, it must become empirical and found itself on religious experience. He saw the empirical empiricism exemplified in the Vedas. The truths of the rishis are not evolved as a result of logical reasoning or systematic philosophy, but are the products of spiritual intuition or drishti or vision. The rishis are not so much the authors of the truths recorded in the Vedas, as the seers who were able to discern the eternal truths by raising their life spirit to the plane of universal spirit. There are, they are the pioneer researchers in the realm of the spirit who saw in the world more than their followers. Their utterance are not based on transitory vision, but on country, continuous experience of the resident life and power. When the Vedas are regarded as the highest authority, and all that is meant is that the most exciting of all authorities is the authority of facts. From his writings collected as the Hindu's view of life, up to lectures delivered at Manchester's College, Oxford, 1926, Hinduism insists on our working steadily upwards in improving our knowledge of God. The worshippers of the absolute are of the highest rank, Second to them are the worshippers of the personal God. Then come the worshippers of the incarnations of Rama, Krishna, Buddha. Below them are those who worship deities, ancestors, and sages. And lowest of all are the worshippers of petty forces and spirits. 
the deities of some men are in water bathing places and those of most advanced are in the heaven those of children in religion are in the images of wood and stone but the sage finds his god in the deeper self the man of action finds his god in fire the man of feeling is in the heart the feeble minded in the idol but the strong in spirit and good find god everywhere the seers see the supreme in the self and not in the images to radha krishnan advaita vedanta was the best representative of hinduism as being grounded in intuition in contrast to the intellectually mediated interpretations of other religions he objected against charges of quietism and world denial instead stressing the need ethic of social service giving a modern interpretation of classical terms as tatva masi according to radha krishna vedanta offers the most direct intuitive experience and the inner realization which makes in the highest form of religion the vedanta is not a religion but religion itself in its most universal and deepest significance radha krishnan saw other religions including that uh, what dr s radha krishnan understands as lower forms of hinduism as and his interpretations of advaita vedanta thereby hinduizing all religions although radha krishnan was well acquainted with the western culture and philosophy he was also critical of them he stated that western philosophers despite all claims to objectivity are influenced by the theological influences of their own culture two commemorative stamps were released by india post in 1967 and 1989 and there is a lot of literature that is credited to sarvepalli radha krishna so today on this occasion of teachers day we express our sincere heartfelt gratitude to all the teachers all the gurus and all the academicians for their enormous contribution to the fraternity so we wish you all happy teachers day on this teachers day occasion and remember and pay our respects to sarvepalli radha krishna across the world teachers day is celebrated on different days and we have world teachers day also celebrated by unesco on 5th october and various days based on great visionaries like in india we celebrate teachers day on 5th september commemorating sarvepalli radha krishnan's birthday similarly in different countries in their respective countries they are commemorating teachers day on their occasions today is also commemorated as world samosa day hope everyone likes this favorite snack samosa and we have lot of flavors also with different ingredients so today we are excited to celebrate this day by eating delicious snacks samosas are fried pyramid shaped dish filled with onions potatoes cheese peas and several other filling options they are extremely popular in india egypt south africa and the middle east generally eaten as appetizers for samosa fans it's a three course meal and the world samosa day is a day of festivities despite popular belief samosas did not originate in india 
where it enjoys extreme popularity elsewhere in the world. It originated in the Middle East sometime before 10th century. It was brought to India by the traders around 13th and 14th centuries. Today, samosas are so well loved in India that they can be found anywhere from homes to fancy restaurants to roadside vendors. The samosa finds reference to 10th century gastronomic literature. Many medieval Persian texts mention sambosa, which is an early relative of samosa and cousin of Persian pyramidal pastry, samsa. Historical accounts refer to sambusak, sambusak, or sambuzaj as tiny means filled triangles eaten by traveling merchants around campfires and packed in saddlebags as snacks for a long journey. According to these references, traveling merchants traveled from Central Asia to North Africa, East Asia, and South Asia, and with them, samosas reached these places. In India, Samosas came with the Middle Eastern chefs who migrated for employment during the Delhi Sultanate rule. Soon it became a snack fit for the king. When the medieval Moroccan traveler, Ibn Battuta, visited India in the 14th century, he documented the banquets at the court of Muhammad bin Tughlaq, where sambusak, a dish filled with mince, peas, pistachios, almonds in a triangular pastry was served to the guest. There have been numerous accounts of people enjoying this historical delight since then. Abdul Zafi, one of the nine gems of Akbar's court, mentions the Mughal emperor's relish samosas in 9th century, and it is a gem of Akbar. Many medieval Persian text mention sambusa or samosa, which is an early relative of samosa in 10th century. Ibn Battuta, the medieval Moroccan traveler, mentions samosa being served to guest of Muhammad bin Tughlaq in 14th century. Amir Kusaru, a Sufi scholar and musician, writes about samosas being enjoyed by the Indian royal court in 1300. India, specifically South India, is very much famous and very well known for the samosas and different types of samosas. But in Somalia, samosas are banned, which is the only country to ban samosas. In Gujarat, the patti samosas are very popular. So the best way to enjoy World Samosa Day is to eat a samosa. Samosas are best enjoyed hot and fresh out of the stove. Nothing is better than homemade samosas. So make it a family event and cook this delicious comfort food with your loved ones in your home kitchen. Scout for new samosa recipes online. Better still, go crazy and invent your own samosa recipe. After eating samosas, the Spanish tweaked the recipe of a little and created empandas. The earliest samosa were made with uh, meat, pistachios, and onions, though they were more uh, of non vegetarian at first. But later on, vegetarian, uh, vegetarian samosas are quite popular than non vegetarian samosas and are very widely available and are world favorites, which are veg samosas. And it comes in various shapes. In Turkish nations, samosas come in both half moon shapes as well as triangles and pyramids. The shape of the classic samosa resembles a pyramid, so it is named after pyramids of the Middle East. Vegetable samosas are the most common samosa type while only a few countries enjoy meat samosas, most of the samosas across the world, which are very much famous, which are very much popular and very much liked, are vegetable samosas. 
samosas are comfort food for thousands of people world samosa day celebrates yummy food loved by many samosa are, are not a recent invention they have been enjoyed through centuries even by kings nothing brings people close like sharing food and samosas are best enjoyed when eaten with people So with this, we shall end this commemoration. Today is also commemorated as Telephone Tuesday in US. Picture coming into the office after a long weekend, and you look at your phone only to find your voicemail is positively burst. September fifth is officially a day notorious for surprisingly. More phone calls than usual, making itself heard just after the Labor Day. Telephone Tuesday is a trendy holiday created based on a clear spike in telephone calls to business and organizations. The high number of calls usually flooded partly due to unmanned telephones during the long weekend. Makes sense, right? Then comes many schools which open after Labor Day weekend, blended with holiday season fast approaching. In addition, it has been uncovered the organized fox attempt to tackle their to-do list on this day too, and so inbound calls rise up to fifty percent on this day. So these consumers are concerned about setting up arrangements pivotal to their lives and making purchases. So a phone call to them means assurance. Telephone Tuesday is now known as powerful business tool. and telephone is known as a great instrument for the trade very close to black friday and cyber monday these days is caught among the madness of the busy season the infant invention of the telephone goes back to 1800s and is widely understood to have first been invented by alexander graham bell however it is said that the telephone had been in development since 1600s but there is no clear indicate indication as by whom there weren't actually called telephone set first phones were called mechanical acoustic devices because they simply transmitted voice data instead of radio and audio the first known conversation on the telephone was between alexander graham bell and his assistant on march 10 1876 he spoke into the telephone and said mr watson come here i want to see you the first ever phone users used to use the same opening to talk and listen as there was only one wire for receiving and transmitting your voice soon telephone operators were required to assist and to connect more calls women became the majority of staff in telephone exchange jobs as many younger men were proving to enjoy pranks too often while connecting calls and lines were not being connected successfully in 1982 a man named almond brown stauger who was previously an undertaker invented an automatic telephone exchange company due to his frustration he was having difficulty with local telephone operators sending his calls to the competitor all the time his company then worked with the british post offices in 1912 landing a contract with the british telephone system regardless some of the people were still using the manual exchange phone calls up until 1976 in places like scotland by 1973 the mobile phones have arrived by motorola and it has weighed 2 kilograms Ten years later, in 1983, Motorola released the Dyna Dynatac 8000X, which costed $4,000 US and had a battery life of 30 minutes. At that time,
there are six different types of telephones in the world, including distinctive ones like exchange, tap dialing, rotary dialing, candlestick phones, and many more. The world's first commercially available cell phone was Motorola Dynatac, which was bigger than the baby monitor. The first ever telephone book was released in 1878, right after the first telephone line was invented. Lady Gaga's song Telephone was originally written by Gaga for Britney Spears. In 2019 alone, around 40.8 million iPhones have been sold. Today is also commemorated as National Shrink Day in US. The special bond we have come to develop with our psychiatrists and therapists. The day reminds us the contribution of therapists, psychiatrists, psychotherapists, and psychologists make to our society. These caring individuals play a meaningful role in communities, making them observing praise the holiday was created for and home to Bob Nehmer, who played These caring individuals play a meaningful role in our communities, making them deserving day of prize. This was created as a homage to Bob Newhart, who played a psychiatrist on the TV series, The Bob Newhart Show. Considering the principal role that psychologists and psychiatrists play in our daily lives, it is surprising to learn these developments are relatively recent. Although ancient societies were interested in the philosophical study of psychology and human emotions, this was far from the specialized academic. For example, in ancient Egypt, scholars attempted to study mental disorders. The earliest examples of academic psychological study can be traced back to 19th century, where Gustav Frechner and Willem Wundt, German scientists and philosophers, developed the first earliest systematic studies on the human psyche and established the first psychological research laboratory. The early, uh, earliest examples of academic psychological study can be traced back to 19th century, where Gustav Fechner and Willem Wurm, German scientists and philosophers, developed the earliest systematic studies of the human psyche and established the first psychological research laboratory. The late 1800s saw a growing interest in psychology. During this, Fried Sigmund Freud, Freud and Australian neurologists began developing an earliest frameworks of psychoanalysis. In his research later, influenced by the advent of speech-based therapy, which is widely applied even today. Throughout the 20th century, psychology as a field developed immensely, giving birth to several new specialties. Behavioral research particularly became an increasingly studied subject with several grants across the US dedicated to this form of study. It was also around the earliest decades of the 20th century that psychology became an officially recognized
So the human brain is a very powerful and according to many studies can hold about 2.5 million gigabytes of information. The base of the nervous system forms just a couple of weeks after conception beginning as a neutral plate and finally the brain. We remember some memories more vividly. Emotions are largely responsible for changes in our brains as they are prompted by hormones and chemical reactions which can transform our brain's physical. Despite the achievements of neurology and psychological studies, during the last few decades, the human brain is still a mystery to us. Some of the most urgent issues we face in our lives are related to mental health, especially today. As the world develops and becomes more demanding, shrink helps us to become more mentally resistant and which is vital. We are currently more aware of the implications of mental health issues today. As guardians of mental health, shrinks play a significant role. And it is an opportunity to show appreciation for the ones of the most important professors. It's time to show the gratitude and pay tribute to each and everyone on this occasion. This week is also commemorated as National Child Protection Week in Australia. People all over Australia observe National Child Protection Week, in short known as NCPW, each September as part of nationwide initiative to protect children from abuse and neglect. This year, it takes place from 5th to 11th September. In many parts of the world, child safety, safety is still a pressing issue as many as In many parts of the country, child safety is still a pressing issue as many low-income countries can be vulnerable to social issues that can put children at risk. This weekly commemoration is part of the collective efforts of the government and society to uphold child safety and well-being. There have been research reports on cases of child abuse by teachers and employers way back in 1800s. Although more attention is dedicated to the issues nowadays, it still continues to the effects of societies around the world. As of the 1970s, studies on child abuse has become more specialized academic field and garnered much more attention. Child protection laws have developed a part of the international legal framework. 
these laws are now said to protect participation from the master. Today is also commemorated as National Cheese Pizza Day. As pizza deserves, deserves its own day for love, the margarita, pepperoni, olive and mushroom, which is more likely the reason for National Cheese Pizza Day being created. Today is also commemorated as National Cellulite Day in US. Cellulite is completely normal and women should embrace their bodies. It is absolutely normal to have cellulite and women shouldn't be humiliated by cellulite in the present in women with all body types. So the day is all remembering or authentic and accepting oneself. The goal of National Cellulite Day is to increase awareness about the fact that cellulite is natural and part of the body. Beauty, if you're still unsure what cellulite is, here's a quick rundown. Cellulite is completely harmless and very, very Cellulite is more common in women and it can appear on the thighs, hips, abdomen and almost everywhere. Cellulite is caused by a buildup of fat breath beneath the skin. The amount of cellulite and where it appears can differ from person to person. However, it is more important to understand that cellulite can affect anyone with some women are more prone to elders. Today is also commemorated a national be late for something day in US to promote the more positive aspects of procrastination. No longer do you have a 
succumb to the pressure of a busy schedule. Now you have the perfect excuse to be a fashion lay. This always highlights the need for us to slow down and many hectic. Today is also commemorated as National Actum Day in US, celebrating and appreciating those often marginalized or mocked because they are different. Those who participate on this day show their support and acceptance of others' uniqueness. It is also an opportunity to show your support for the people's fun and fantastic things. From new hire styles to unique sports, National Actum Day encourages people to celebrate what makes something someone different without marking or judging other people based on their differences. This day was submitted by Agdom on May 2020 as a counterpoint in the increasing insensitivity to the others with mental disabilities that were becoming more and more prevalent in India. Agdom featured that they would find themselves silenced or ridiculed again and felt that observed later than that maybe it doesn't sound like a national holiday on paper, but this has been celebrated for years. When you look or when you start looking at the history of people with disabilities, and how they have been treated over time, things get pretty sad and disheartening. Today is also commemorated as another look unlimited day. Perfect time to clean our closet which occurs on day before labor. This is best opportunity to go through your belongings and take another look. Literally Rocky, uh, rake through the clutter and uh, see what's fit to reuse, gift, donate, or even serve. Some say you never truly appreciate something until you take another look at it. And this applies in most situations. Having another look can open your eyes to the new outlooks and perspectives you never previously looked into consideration. This is all another look unlimited days. The, although the history of the day itself cannot accurately be traced at the moment that there has been always an infinite amount of ways to view different scenarios, ideas, and apparently even our personal belongings. It is the human nature to collect things as we live our lives and go through experiences. However, these items don't all necessarily remain essential parts of our daily lives and so becoming nothing more than a memory or even a verse. Clutter. We definitely are guilty of this. However, this doesn't mean that the things we consider junk cannot become treasures for someone else. So take the time out through some of the abundant clutter in your home and give items a new purpose. Today, 
we are commemorating International Day of Charity with the theme Global Solid Solidarity to Eradicate Poverty. Charity, like the notions of volunteerism and philanthropy, provides real social bonding and contributes to the creation of inclusive and more resilient societies. Charities can elevate the worst effects of humanitarian crisis, supplement public services in healthcare, education, housing, and child protection. It assists advancement of culture, science, sports, and protection of cultural and natural heritage. It also promotes the right of marginalized and underprivileged and spreads the message of humanity in conflict situations. In 2030, Agenda on Sustainable Development, adopted in September 2015, the United Nations recognizes that eradicating poverty in all its forms and dimensions, including extreme poverty, is the greatest global challenge and an indispensable requirement for sustainable development. The agenda also calls for a spirit of strengthening global solidarity focused in particular on the needs of the poorest and most vulnerable. It is also acknowledges the role of diverse private sector, ranging from micro enterprise to the most vulnerable. It also acknowledges the role of diverse private sector, ranging from micro enterprises to cooperatives, multinationals, and that of civil society organizations and philanthropic organizations in the implementation of the new agenda. The 17 Sustainable Development Goals set forth in Agenda can be grouped into six critical areas, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. They have the potential to transform our lives and our planet by providing the framework needed for philanthropic institutions to enable all people to contribute to the betterment of our world. The International Day of Charity was established with the objective of sensitizing and mobilizing people, NGOs and stakeholders all around the world to help others through volunteer and philanthropic activities. The date of 5th September was chosen in order to commemorate the anniversary of passing away of Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who received the Nobel Prize in 1979 for work undertaken in the struggle to overcome poverty and distress, which also constitute a threat to space. Mother Teresa, the renowned nun and missionary, was born in Agnes Bonja, Bonjakshu, in 1910. In 1928, she went to India, where she devoted herself to helping the destitute. In 1948, she became an Indian citizen and founded the Order of Missionaries of Charity in Kolkata in 1950 which became noted for its work among the poor and the dying in the city. For over 45 years, she ministered to be poor, sick, orphaned, and dying while guiding the missionaries of charity expansion, first in India and then in other countries, including hospices and homes for the poorest and homeless. Mother Teresa's work has been recognized and acclaimed throughout the world, and she has received a number of awards and distinctions, including the Nobel Prize, Peace Prize. Mother Teresa died on September 5th, 1997, at 87 years of age. In recognition of the role of charity in elevating humanitarian crisis and human suffering within and among nations, as well as the efforts of charitable organizations and the individuals, including the work of Mother Teresa, the General Assembly of the United Nations in its resolution 67 by 105 designated 5th September, the anniversary of the death of Mother Teresa as the International Day of Charity. The UN recognizes the civic engagement plays an important role in terms of development in creating the desired global change. Here are fewer ways it can be done so. Raise awareness about how difficult challenges are and push for the collective action in global issues. Enhance trust among diverse groups and build social capital. Eliminate societal and cultural barriers and create cohesion and build resilience through community action. 
and hence enhance the sense of responsibility for one's community. One of the purposes the United Nations has stated in its charter is to achieve international cooperation in solving international problems of an economic, social, cultural, or humanitarian character. The UN first did this in the aftermath of the Second World War on the devastated continent of Europe, which it helped to rebuild. The organization is now relied upon the international community to coordinate humanitarian relief. Operations due to natural and uh, man-made So with this, we shall conclude today's commemorations. Thank you everyone for joining us. We wish you all once again happy Teachers Day to all of you. So we request everyone to quickly fill up the feedback form before you leave the platform. <laughs>